Uh, greetings. Uh, this is uh, Professor Brooke Hailubesha uh, from Now TV, Diplomatic Corner. Uh, today, uh, I'm in the premises in the ch Chancery of the Embassy of Bangladesh. I have with me none other than His Excellency Ambassador Mohammed Nazrul Islam. Uh, welcome, Your, Your Excellency, Mr. Ambassador. Uh, we'll spend the, the next uh, um, um, the next minutes uh, talking to him about uh, Ethiopian-Bangladeshi -Bangla relations. Uh, and uh, uh, more uh, on bilateral as well as multilateral uh, relations. Uh, Ambassador Islam represents uh, his country, Bangladesh, in Ethiopia uh, for almost two years. He'll tell us about that. And he's accredited to not only uh, Ethiopia, to the African Union, to the United Nations, ECA, uh, Burundi, uh, Sudan, South Sudan, uh, and of course to Ethiopia. Ambassador Islam, welcome to our show, Diplomatic Corner. Thank you very much. And let me take this opportunity to convey my greetings to your audience in Naho TV. Thank you. Thank you. Accept it. Thank you, sir. Ambassador, Ambassador Islam, uh, let's start off our uh, you know, interview with you know, highlights and significance of uh, Ethiopia-Bangladesh bilateral relations. How did it start? What are the highlights and the like? Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, when we talk about Ethiopia-Bangladesh bilateral relations, uh, many people are not aware that we have hundreds of years of close relations because now it may seem, uh, I mean, uh, sometimes may not seem logical that how two countries so far apart had such strong uh, bond. 700 years ago, uh, there were a lot of Ethiopians, I mean, actually 8,000 Ethiopians were working in Bangladesh 700, 700 years ago. Years ago. Years ago. So we had very close relations, and Ethiopians used to work in Bangladesh in the accounting sector. They were warriors and heads, chiefs, heads of army, and also they were also in the planning sector. So Ethiopia has a glorious history, and this history somehow wow. I see missing. This has to be really missing here out, in Ethi really. Ethiopia because. Wow. Uh, we had very close relation, and probably you will be amazed to know we had two Ethiopian kings in Bangladesh. No. Yes, two Ethiopian kings, and they took. Uh, they were actually heads of uh, army, and they also took uh, Bangladeshi names. So, and we have in our parts of the world. It's now uh, fell in India, but we had the obelix, Aktum obelix, also Aktum. constructed by them. So. These are amazing histories which uh, people of both the countries are not aware. But I can tell you that Bangladeshis uh, know a lot of things about Ethiopia, former Abyssinia, and because of uh, not only that history, but also due to religious uh, affinity uh, because of the advent of Islam to this part of the world and then uh, later spread to our part of the world. So this also created closeness. But rather than that, mainly those historical engagement, bilateral engagement, had a very strong bond between our two, our two countries. So uh, our embassy here uh, was established in 2016. Uh, so year-wise, it's not a very old embassy. Uh, but our relationships date back to hundreds of years. So this is on this background, I have started working uh, to even strengthen the bilateral relations further. So my immediate priorities are to strengthen the economic relations because actually nowadays everything depends on the economy. So, so I am trying to find out mutually beneficial sectors for our economies. And uh, you probably are aware that we had invested in Ethiopia. Probably the, the largest garments factory in Africa was established by Bangladesh, followed by another very big sweater factory. Unfortunately, it was these factories were in the north, uh, which uh, were, I mean were affected adversely during the conflict. So we are very happy that the conflict is now finished, and uh, we will resume. And during the uh, last month, a uh, lot of Bangladeshi projects have been submitted to Ethiopian authorities, like 
two solar uh, projects uh, around 400 million dollars and also a mobile banking project mining project uh, so and also there are negotiations with other uh, government organizations even uh, for joint collaboration in uh, egg processing sector and pharmaceuticals is one of the very important sector that I see. We have a lot of opportunities. Bangladesh is uh, a very strong producer and player in the global pharmaceutical um, uh, market. And we actually export pharmaceutical to 170 countries already. And our pharmaceutical products are much cheaper, but uh, with very high quality. I'll give you a small example. Okay. One hepatitis C, mm -hmm. full dose, it cost $84,000 in USA. $84,000? $84,000. US dollars. US okay. dollars mm -hmm. uh, with this. Uh, but the same medicine we are producing for $20 only in Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. So even uh, countries like Australia and Switzerland, they are importing our medicine. So I see medicine can be a very good sector where we can work on for the benefit of the Ethiopian general or common Ethiopians uh, to get cheap and but very good standard of medicine. And above all, then it comes to the garment sector. So, you know, though we are small, but we are the second largest garment exporter in the world. So we want to bring this experience and expertise to Ethiopia. We have started, but uh, due to some uh, international uh, economic downturn. Second largest. Also, yeah, we the are the world. second largest garment exporter in the world Gar after China. Gar garment. After China. After China. Yes. Yeah. So we want to uh, bring that, uh, uh, I mean, experience and expertise mm -hmm. here. And I have talked to our investors, and actually they are waiting for the Agua facilities to be reinstated for Ethiopia. Uh, so it's when, expected. Yeah. Yes, yeah, well, I also yeah. expect that with the cessation of these hostilities and conflict, so it will be reinstated soon. So then our garments entrepreneurs, they will again come and start their operation. And another sector which I see will be very uh, mutually beneficial is the agriculture sector. Mm -hmm. You know, Bangladesh is a small country. Yes. One tenth of the size of Ethiopia but with a 170 million population. But we somehow managed to produce food for everybody. Not only uh, produce food for everybody, in many agriculture products, we are among the top five in the world, like fish, like vegetable, like food production. So Ethiopia has such huge, huge fertile yeah. land and a lot of resources. So we can bring that expertise and experience to ETP also. So that is also I am working on. Wonderful. So I mean, there, there, there's a whole lot of things that really um, uh, based on mutual interest that both Bangladesh and Ethiopia as sovereign countries can benefit from. And on top of that, you know, uh, entrepreneurs, uh, people who have money, people who have technology, who have experience, uh, people who own companies can come here and invest trade and commerce can prosper based on you know, mutually investing and working here. You had mentioned, um, by the way, textile industry, uh, it, it is top. Uh, you know, Bangladesh is really top in the world in terms of textile industry. You spoke about mining, collaborating in mining. What kind of mining uh, is, uh, is, uh, is planned with Ethiopia? Okay. What's the interest? Yeah. Uh, mining, we are a very big consumer of gold, Bangladesh. Consumer, yes. Of yeah, gold. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we are very, so gold is one of the attractive sectors. Here. Here. And, but the proposal was submitted for lithium mining, one of the Bangladeshi companies. Lithium. Lithium mining, one of the Bangladeshi companies, which are thinking of venturing into uh, electric car manufacturing. Battery. So for the battery, they think that they can also start um, mining uh, for lithium. And another thing I want to add is that on the top of the things or engagement that I have planned, uh, I am working on establishing the direct flight between Addis Ababa and Dhaka oh. for the people-to-people -people contact. This is at the, almost um, at the end of the process. 
So it now awards uh, signing by both the sides. So when the both the sides uh, signs it, I think within next month this may happen. That's good news. So not only people to people contact will be increased, but we can have direct uh, export and import of Ethiopian and Bangladeshi products between two countries. So this will also pave way for further or immediate. That's great news. That is really great news. I mean, Ethiopian Airlines is, is really expanding globally. Yes. And of course, uh, as far as we know, Tibetan Airlines flies to India, mm -hmm. China, New Delhi, you know, four Mumbai, flights Co to India, four, yeah, India. Yes. and it's just an extension. And uh, mm -hmm. to Dhaka, that's really good news. And uh, I'm glad it, it will it, it will be realized in the coming uh, uh, sh short uh, short period of time. Uh, Your Excellency, uh, uh, aqua meaning fish and the like. Ethiopia is uh, landlocked, but it has a number of uh, endowed with lakes. Um, how 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 far have do we have a developed uh, relations uh, and plus interest in the developing fish fish industry aqua fish in, in industries between the two countries? Uh, good that you have raised this point. Bangladesh is around third ranked in the world in terms of sweet water fish production. Sweet water. Uh, and also, uh, we are uh, also a leader in um, uh, shrimp production, but shrimp production, it needs seawater. So since you don't have seawater, but I also uh, told everywhere that you have such big lakes yeah. and most of them are not properly utilized. So we have different varieties, we have probably around 40 varieties of fishes that we consume in Bangladesh. Small, big, medium size. But I think these fishes can be very well cultured and uh, cultivated in the uh, big lakes uh, of Ethiopia. Because so far Ethiopia has only uh, tilapia and Nile perch. Nile perch. So the These variety the is, ones, variety yeah. is yeah. less. Yeah. True. So we can uh, actually introduce this uh, very delicious uh, sweet water fishes in the lakes. So um, we have been actually uh, in many countries of Africa, Bangladeshi fishermen went and they have started new way of aquaculture. I am ambassador to South Sudan. I can tell you that for the last 10 years, Bangladeshis changed the fish industry of South Sudan. They started uh, fishing in a very organized way. Not only the way that uh, they have started fishing in such a new way, also they are teaching the South Sudanese how to prepare these fishes deliciously. I mean, not only just the catch, how to consume it with, uh, I mean, with a new uh, menu or a new flavor, so they are also introducing it. Varieties. So, I mean, and the, how to cook it so that it is, uh, I mean, attractive for the consumer. So I think uh, we are also trying to bring that expertise from Bangladesh here, especially if we, I mean, in future, we can strike out a very good collaboration with Ethiopian government or even private sector. Ethiopian lakes will offer a very good opportunity for aquaculture. Great, great. Thank you. Maybe one territory that we need to cover, I think, is education. You have well, uh, well established research universities, ac academia. Is there any attempts to, you know, Ethiopia has now uh, 50 plus big public universities as well as several hundred private colleges and universities. Is there any attempt uh, to establish uh, links with Bangladesh, because we have got, I feel, a lot to learn, especially in, in microfinancing. The father of Yunus, the father of the world, and the Nobel Prize, you know, very famous, you know, is a, the son of Bangladesh, you know. No, thank you very much. And I, with this end in view, I have already visited Jima University, Arbor Minch University, Bahirdor University, and also Diradawa University. I have already uh, visited these big universities. So I was thinking of striking out some mutually beneficial uh, exchange program between these universities. And also, you uh, mentioned about microfinance. Yes, yes. If probably uh, you are aware that two...
Okay. Now, Your Excellency, now let's move to uh, the African continent. Ethiopia is part of um, Africa, and Africa is not very far away from uh, Bangladesh. Um, with how many countries do you have official diplomatic relations? Uh, and how does the economic, economic political relations with African nations, uh, how, how do you see the, uh, how do you, uh, if you could share with us? Yes. I'm also African, uh, ambassador to African Union. Yes. I'm also. Yes. So yeah. this way I try to be engaged with African Union, but uh, sometimes uh, African Union's very structure uh, actually may not be very conducive for such open interaction because they have their priorities and they have their mandates. So uh, I'm trying to find out to be more engaged with the African Union. The, our governments, one of the overseas priority, uh, priorities is now to develop very close and strong relationship with all African countries uh, because of very practical reasons. We have more or less diplomatic relations with all African countries. And Bangladeshis uh, are now coming to different African countries for uh, work and for other entrepreneurial activities like take the case of South Sudan. Uh, South Sudan internet and IT business mm. more or less are dominated by Bangladeshis. So in South Sudan. So there are a lot of Bangladeshi companies who went there. So this is just one example. And for us also Bangladesh, for Bangladesh, Africa is a very big opportunity as a market. You know, we produce, uh, we are the second largest garments exporter in the world. So we are definitely eyeing Africa as our next uh, market. And also it will be beneficial for Africans to get cheap Bangladeshi products compared to expensive garments from other sources. Pharmaceuticals is uh, another thing that we want to bring to Africa. I have traveled to different countries of Africa and I saw that they lack basic medicine and even the imported medicines are very expensive. So this is one thing we want to introduce. And contract farming or agro farming that we discussed, we want to also introduce in different African countries. So we want to do that. So these are the priorities for Bangladesh, for African continent, and we are working on it, and we are trying to organize fairs, seminars, symposiums in different African countries, and. I have also planned one big uh, fair or seminar, or, I mean investment seminar for Ethiopia as well. Very good, very, very good, thank you. Uh, as you know, you know, opening an embassy is a, is a, it will have you know, financial implications, of course. And uh, what countries do is to uh, assign ambassadors as non-resident ambassadors. Uh, this is obvious, even Ethiopia does that and so also many other countries. Uh, is there any uh, strategic countries that you, you focus on among the African countries? Uh, literally, other countries have strategic interest, you know, say key, like Nigeria, South Africa, Egypt in the north, Ethiopia in the east, or Kenya in the south, South Africa and the like. Do you have this kind of a policy? No, we don't have any country or region focused policy as yet, but uh, we want to see Africa as a whole package. Uh, because it's 1.2 billion population. 1.4. Yeah. 1.4 yeah, yeah. billion population and also a GDP of 50 billion dollars. So that's why we want to uh, look at Africa as a single opportunity and with ACTFA, African Continental Free Trade, Free trade area, area, coming yeah. up. Yes. So we are targeting that. So since Africa will be a common market like EU, uh, so we are thinking that our opportunities lies with the continental free trade area as well. So that's why we are focusing on Africa as a whole rather than any country specific or region specific uh, strategy. Thank you for explaining your approach regarding Africa. Thank you. Now let's move to my next question and that is, you know, um, terrorism. The whole world is challenged by terrorism, local as well as regional and international, you know, Al-Qaeda you know, ISIS um, and still, you know, and there are chapters now in Africa, West Africa, you know, uh, you know, uh, Boko Haram and then uh, East Africa, you know, Al-Shabaab, uh, where we suffer, uh, we suffer the consequence, Ethiopia is affected as a neighboring country of uh, Somalia and the Horn region as well. 
Uh, what's your policy regarding terrorism? Uh, fortunately, uh, there were incidents of sporadic terrorism in Bangladesh. But we are fortunate that we have so far managed to keep this organized terrorism under control in Bangladesh. So we did not let them any space. Our prime minister told that there is zero tolerance for any kind of activities like terrorism. And terrorists are terrorists. They don't have any religious or any political agenda. They want to actually exploit the fear among the people. And for them to exploit, they go for anarchy and all sort of nefarious activities. So we are very strict on that. And you know Bangladesh is a predominantly Muslim country. But we are secular in uh, our constitution and in all kind of political practices. So that's why there is no space or no opportunities for any religious terrorism in Bangladesh. And also we are collaborating with all, of, all countries, all countries of the world and international organization even, so that we can tackle this problem in other parts of the world. And also there were, uh, I mean, promotional uh, activities on behalf of the government in terms of education, in terms of skill development, so that the youth, they are not attracted to this kind of destructive activities. So they are mainly engaged with, uh, I mean, uh, education, their future, their job. And what we have done in Bangladesh, you know, the heads of the mosque, imams, mm -hmm. imams who are the religious heads of the mosque, mm -hmm. all the imams have been trained to train the youth in their locality, to encourage uh, the youth uh, to be a pious or religious person rather than to listen to this, I mean, uh, false uh, notions, false reasons of these terrorists. So this is one thing and definitely uh, we are also with African countries fighting this kind of uh, so-called religious terror uh, terrorists and we hope that with the concerted effort of everybody these terrorists will be soon uh, obliterated or deleted or destroyed these terrorist activities. So we are always with all the countries fighting terrorism and this is really unfortunate development during the last 30 odd years uh, and probably global politics is also a partially to blame many of the terrorist organizations that we hear now were in uh, previous times maybe were supported by somebody for some small benefits now when that benefit is over they have let them free now we are the the global the whole world is now suffering from their uh, support probably once upon a time by some big powers or some <laughs> somebody big organizations. Yeah, thank you, thank you, uh, thank you. And at this juncture, you know, it has to be told. We touched upon it a little bit. That is, you know, uh, yes, there is, there, yes, we have challenges of terrorism, and we have issues of peace and security. And uh, in the world, uh, you know, serving as blue helmets, Bangladesh is known uh, top three always. You know, Bangladesh, India, Pakistan. If we add the fourth I mean, and the Ethiopia. fifth, is Ethiopia? Yes, the fourth and the fifth. You took it from my mouth. Yeah. So Ethiopia is also, also the largest peace contributor in African continent. So uh, the commitment is there. You know, to 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 make a difference, and uh, you know, to uh, for mutual interest to do something. And Bangladesh is. Uh, are known for serving under the blue helmet. I just want to, uh, to, to nail that point. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Your Excellency, uh, Bangladesh, I believe, is it a member of the Organization of Islamic Conference? Yes. 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 Active yes. member. Active member, and we have actually become a member of Islamic Conference in 1974. Just one year after independence? No, uh, three years. Three Seven, years. 71 and 74. 70. 74, we became uh, the member of the Islamic okay. Conference, and uh -huh. we are one of the largest Islamic countries it, indeed, in the in, YC. In so among the top three uh, Islamic countries in YC, and 
definitely we are active and also uh, YC is uh, technological university situated in Bangladesh. So technological university. Oh, okay. YC, okay. YC, has, okay, I got you. YC has established uh, a technological university in Bangladesh. It's for the students of all countries of YC. So it's a big organization. And also in terms of terrorism, in terms of social and economic development, we are an active participant in all the activities of YC. And as one of the largest countries uh, in YC, so definitely there are responsibilities for Bangladesh to push forward the principle and interest of YC. YC previously, you understand, was mainly, when it was established, mainly it was an YC, political yeah. organization. As a political, yes. Mainly as a voice, it was yeah. established as a political organization. But as time passed, it has changed its nature and as the demand of the global politics as well. So it has focused from politics to economic development of the members. So definitely it is uh, even better for us. So we are participating in all the activities of OIC and definitely as a very important and responsible member. So we are contributing in different activities. Okay. Thank you, Your Excellency. Let me uh, ask you just a curious question, and that is, um, you still uh, practice uh, since independence parliamentary democracy, I think British, UK <laughs> parliamentary democracy, and uh, so is Pakistan, so is, uh, you know, uh, India, in the neighborhood that is. Um, and um, Ethiopia also does that. Uh, there is also sometimes discussion whether to change it to a presidential uh, kind of a system. Just a curious question, and that is, how far do you, do you feel that uh, this had uh, sort of fit, uh, fit the, the political system of uh, Bangladesh? Uh, we found out that parliamentary system is more beneficial. Uh, so our whole politics and political system uh, have been geared uh, to the parliamentary system that we had for I a mean, long time. So even the people also their psyche has been molded uh, to that. And parliamentary system has better checks and balances compared to the presidential system. So uh, our, the government uh, ruling party in the government, they also think that uh, it is more beneficial to bring benefit to the people through parliamentary uh, modes of democracy rather than any presidential system because for we have a president but that's yes. a ceremonial symbolic, yeah, yeah, ceremonial symbolic, he yeah. is the head of the state so but uh, i mean since uh, people uh, can exercise their rights better in a more efficient way in the parliamentary system of democracy so we actually mm. think that uh, i mean it is better suited for us wonderful Wonderful. That, that, that is great. Thank you. And now let's, uh, uh, on the sidelines, talk about women and girls, of course. And uh, in every society, mother nature, 50 percent, 51.1 or 49.9, men and women, the gender, demo, demography in every world. Of course, there are varieties, you know. When, whenever there is war, the number of um, uh, men go down because of, you know, men die, go fight and die. Uh, Asia, your part of the world, is known for women leaders. Sheikh Hasini is one of them, very famous in Bangladesh. Uh, I would like you to say something on that, because that area is known for Indira Gandhi, you know, India, Bandaranaika, Sri Lanka, or the old Ceylon or Ceylon. Uh, could you t tell us about the role of women uh, in politics, government, and economy uh, in the Bangladesh? And of course, you can't comment on Ethiopia as well, you know, because we aspire that our women and girls, we have now for the first time a woman president, Her Excellency Madam Ambassador Salwag Zodi. Yes, and okay, let me first come to Ethiopia. Yes. I am pleasantly surprised when I came to Ethiopia and pleasantly surprised to see the role and actually importance of women in the Ethiopian society everywhere in the shops, in the banks, and in other places. Women. <laughs> you see a lot of Ethiopian women are working. And another thing is that uh, the respect of Ethiopian men towards women, this is something which is exemplary. I have traveled in developed That's countries. That's good news. 
I have traveled in developed countries and in all other countries, all types of countries. But Ethiopian women's uh, enjoyment of the respect and security that is a prevalent in Ethiopia is very hard to find. Uh, so, I mean, uh, this is to something that should be replicated, that should be manifested in many other parts of the world. So, this is something you should be very proud of. And not only the president is woman, I see the Supreme, the Chief Justice of Supreme Court. Excellency, uh, Uzuru Maaza. Yes, she is a Maza woman. Shinafi. And a yeah. lot of important ministers are women who are young, but uh, women and President Abiy Ahmed are promoting them, like head of uh, Ethio Telecom. Yes. And M even M other M M countries. Fre yeah. So I have met important uh, women who are having very responsible positions. So this is something that should be appreciated and that should be actually uh, manifested in other parts of the world, the support of the government and support of the society for empowerment women. In our parts of the world, especially in Bangladesh, yeah. we have been doing it for a long time. Um, for more than 40 years, more than 40 years, yeah. our prime ministers are women. Even the head of the opposition for more than 40 years, women. So, Deputy Leader of the House, woman. Speaker of the House, woman. woman. So, and also ministers and uh, in uh, other important uh, places, uh, we have now women. And why? Because in the society, we have managed to uplift their status. Because due to microcredit, uh, because of some uh, I mean, beneficial policies of the government, women can become self-sufficient. Even if a woman wants to survive alone without husband, without family, there are ways in our country. So the our, and our government sector also uh, gave a lot of opportunities for women to be self-sufficient. So these earning women, they have now I uh, started enjoying, uh, I mean, more prestige, more honor, and uh, more respect. Because the women who are earning, definitely they are respected in the society, in the family. So their status has been strengthened or uh, even uplifted. So this we have been doing for a long time. And also, since you have mentioned the culture of Women empowerment yes, uh, yes. in our parts of the world, yeah. like in uh, India, even Pakistan. Yes, Pakistan also. Uh, yeah. Even in Myanmar, Aung San Suu Kyi. Yeah, Aung San Suu Kyi, yes, so exactly. Sri Lanka, yes. yeah. so Bangladesh. So Sri Lanka, yeah. So yeah. here yeah. also, yeah. you see that people respect the strong leadership. If woman has a strong leadership, people respect that. So we are working on that age-old respect <laughs> respect, and also we are trying to build on that because we believe that 50 percent of the population are women yeah. so if exactly. you don't if you don't empower respect, them yeah. if they cannot contribute you are losing a huge uh, i mean part of their contribution in the society in exactly. the economy exactly. and in the overall development activities of the nation exactly it's a loss it's a big loss. The productive force of society, the intellect, the knowledge and everything. Thank you for explaining it very, very well. And also our government has uh -huh. made it free uh, for education of women up to 12 plus. So any girl, if she wants Boy, to... Boys and girls. Up to, no, uh, only for, for only girls. Girls only. For girls, up to 12, education is free. Uh, and so, and even if a children goes to school, her parents and his uh, the children's family they received incentive from the government in terms of food and money for sending the children they uh, to school. Yes, as in as an incentive. Yes, as an incentive. Uh, that is a good uh, strategy, Your Excellency. How about in the diplomatic uh, front? Uh, do, uh, do does Bangladesh have a, a lot of? Uh, Women ambassadors, uh, it's very private, I know, but uh, if you like to care, you can share. Do, does Bangladesh have, has a woman ambassadors, Your Excellency? 
uh, <laughs> Bangladesh uh, yes uh, has uh, few women ambassadors. So uh, so far our uh, foreign service size wise uh, still uh, not very big. Um, we are reasonably big, but uh, not very big. So uh, in that respect, we have few women ambassadors in different parts of the world. And my wife also is an ambassador. She is also ambassador to three countries okay. now. So thank you. Can, uh, which countries, if you would uh, care to say? She side? is amb now resident in Jordan and also ambassador to Palestine and Syria. So Jordan, Palestine, and Syria. So. I can tell that uh, and women in our diplomatic service, in many ways, probably they are doing better than their male counterparts. Uh, so because of the intake or the process of examination to get into the foreign service, it's a very rigorous process. So those women who enter the foreign service, they are really capable. So th right from the <laughs> entrance, they start to actually prove their worth. <laughs> That's a great opportunity. And uh, it, it is, uh, and Ethiopia is also making headways, having a few ambassadors, but still we, we, might, we need space or there, are, there is room to Im of improvement. Um, on the sidelines, if I could ask you, um, the, the, the diplomatic um, you know, system as such, is it career diplomacy or some of it is an appointment? Uh, uh, you said it's rigorous, and um, Ethiopia is also, is also choosing, you know, we Ethiopian foreign ministry is also, you know, choosing the strategy, how we can do better, how can we reform ourselves? No, it is a nationwide examination. So it's a national examination to recruit the best. The best. So that's why through a preliminary MCQ type course first, then the uh, analytic written examination, and then uh, verbal examination. So oral. all oral yeah. examination, all this process are, uh, are actually uh, employed to find out the suitable candidates. So this is one thing. And there are some political uh, appointments uh, which government, they think that they are uh, beneficial for the interest of the country. There are some political appointments, so mainly at the level of ambassadors, because uh, to get some benefits from his personal expertise, maybe. Uh, so other than that, we have very few, I mean, uh, appointed politically appointed officials uh, down the grade, but mainly at the level of ambassadors, there are some political appointees who are appointed for their personal skill, knowledge, expertise, or experience. Wonderful, thank you. So now we are coming to a wrapping, wrapping it up. Uh, this will be my last question, uh, and that is, you know, um, you are an ambassador. You know, you are you have the full power and authority representing the people and government of Bangladesh to Ethiopia, uh, really. And in doing so, uh, your goal and objectives and commitment is to, uh, you know, make a difference. Uh, when you leave your office, you know, and um, you are now midway in your ca a term, I believe. What, what would you like to see? What will be your, your legacy? What would you like to be remembered? Uh, you know, laying the groundwork to strengthen uh, the bilateral and the multilateral relations here in Addis. No, definitely. Uh, I am not an ambassador of Bangladesh to Ethiopia. I'm also ambassador yes. of Ethiopia to Bangladesh. Multilateral, that's why I said I'm AU. Also, <coughs> no, Bangladesh. I'm also ambassador of Ethiopia to Bangladesh. Yeah. I'm also okay. selling yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Ethiopia to Bangladesh. Absolutely. Absolutely. So yeah. this is also my job. So how to better exploit the bilateral relations uh, to the best of the benefit of Buddha population. So this will be my task, even if I, I mean, as professionally required, I may one day leave Ethiopia, but I will still continue to come back to Ethiopia because it is not only professional. Now, it is also my personal uh, belief and my personal idea to do something for Ethiopia and for Bangladesh. And even out of professional responsibilities, I will also try to strive uh, to strengthen that relation when even I am not here in Ethiopia. So this is something and definitely 
I have established very good friends here, a very good networks from top to the common, common people. So I want to continue this the same way I am doing it right now. I want to continue it when I am gone. So from my part, I will be always coming back to the, my Ethiopian friends, to the Ethiopian people uh, through various means and ways. So that's how I want to follow up uh, my <laughs> tenure after I leave okay. from Ethiopia. Yes, um, if you could care to uh, share with our audience, in which countries have you served so far before coming to Addis? Uh, I studied in a part of my study was in France, also short and long uh, tenure. Uh, I was in Switzerland for a long time, around eight years. Also, I was in uh, Italy for four and five, four to five years. Also, I was in India, and also for different, uh, I mean, professional responsibilities. I was in Netherlands, in sometimes in Belgium and in these countries mainly. Very good, very good. That's a long, long journey. Uh, thank you, very, very wise words you have said. And I'm sure uh, with your uh, global outlook and global life, uh, if you, do you know, of, um, do you like Ethiopian food and Ethiopian culture, Ethiopian, a few words in Amharic maybe, as a, as a, as a way as to wrap up our interview. <laughs> Amharic, I'm still a bad student, though actually I uh, started, but I mean, <laughs> I mean, professional occup uh, occupation actually keep me busy. So, but definitely food is excellent. And I have one Ethiopian girl cook in my residence to cook Ethiopian foods. So and the, both of us eat with our, uh, I think, with our hand. hand. We, yeah. we prefer our hand. Our hand yeah. So uh, hand and also uh, we also frequently I cook dorowat. Also, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> At my residence. So it, and also like Bangladeshis, okay. they uh, eat a lot of spicy foods. So this is another great attraction. So, and we can use Ethiopian spices in Bangladesh as well. So this is thing and culture, definitely dance is something I really enjoy. It is very fast. Okay. Yes, it very is. Very rhythmic. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, very beautiful to look at. So even when my friends from Bangladesh come and they also participate in dances in different restaurants. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. this is something and I'm also planning that uh, I have proposed a cultural exchange agreement. Mm -hmm. It is uh, with the ATPN side. Okay. If they agree it, maybe in future we'll have uh, cultural troops coming from Bangladesh. And I also want to bring sports teams uh, to Ethiopia and Ethiopian expertise in long distance running uh, to take to Bangladesh. So and maybe a Bangladeshi restaurant as well. Why not? Uh, future, yes, you know? yes. In future yeah, also yeah. we have some Indian restaurants, mm -hmm. but uh, I am sure that the Bangladeshi recipes mm -hmm. will be very well accepted and welcome by Ethiopians because we have our similar taste. I found out. Yeah. Yes. Indeed, it is. Your Excellency, thank you for your time, really. You are generous. Uh, it, it was a joy to have you, Your Excellency. And I'm sure our audience uh, have, uh, have learned a lot about the people uh, and as well the government of Bangladesh, about your life and about how diplomacy is and what are the, 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 the cornerstones of uh, uh, Bangladesh, you know, foreign policy, diplomacy and economic uh, policies as well and uh, its relations with African nations. I, I really wish you well, and I wish you more success. And I do hope I will meet you someday, somehow, in another occasion uh, to continue our conversation. Thank you, Your Excellency, Ambassador. It's a really pleasure to be with you. I'm, I'm, feel, I'm feeling honored that you are also a veteran diplomat. Yes, and indeed. Uh, <laughs> there yes. are a yeah. lot of things that we can also learn from you. And I'm actually learning every day in Ethiopia, different things. So it has been a really pleasure uh, to be with you and also for your audience and all my best wishes, not only for your audience, for all Ethiopian brothers and sisters. I'm a second law. Oh, you see, you speak Amharic. I'm a second law. I'm a second ambassador. I'm a second law. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the um, ambassador of the 
uh, of the Republic of Bangladesh uh, to Ethiopia as well as to AU, to Burundi, Sudan, South Sudan, and uh, to, to the United Nations, ECA. We had a great time with him. Uh, and uh, uh, we'll continue uh, inviting prominent uh, guests like uh, Ambassador uh, Islam and bring uh, with you and uh, have a great time. Uh, and uh, it's me, Professor Brukailu. I take leave of you. This is from Now TV, uh, Diplomatic Corner. Please keep on watching us until I see you again. Basalamu alu. Au revoir until I see you next time. Thank you for watching us. Mm -hmm.